SQL injection is one of the more common attacks that a web application can experience. People who don't spend a whole lot of time uh, cleaning the user input and validating data uh, will probably see something like this or, or their application will see something like this uh, in the near future. So we'll, uh, we'll log in really quick. I have a test example here that I put together. Um, if you've seen my MySQL I prepared statements video, this is pretty much the same thing, only I'm using uh, the PDO object in place of the MySQL I object. Um, so we have a test user, and then I'm going to pass in the user's uh, password and log in. As you can see, user 4 logged in, which is the user ID. Um, now if I were to go back, and I don't have session set up on this, so just refreshing the page will bring me to this screen. If I pull up the code really quick, look through this, and you can see that we're just passing in the post value exactly as the user enters it. Um, for the most part, most of the people who don't have malicious intent won't put anything in this, uh, this field that will cause any harm. But if a hacker were to put something like this in, where they have a single quote or one equals one with the, and the, the last quote missing, um, they'll actually be able to get access to your system because it's saying whether the password matches or one equals one, which is always going to be true. Uh, so let's copy this and we'll put that into our password field. We'll put John. Uh, I know I don't have a JSON user in the database, so we'll put that as a user and we'll pass in that password. And as you can see, user four is logged in. Even though we didn't specify uh, user 4 or, or the user with ID 4, it's going to pull the first user out of the database. So if that first user is, has administrative rights, they're going to get access to admin level on everything on your website. So definitely watch out for that. One thing that you can do to counteract this and to kind of prevent this is using the PDO object in prepared statements. The PDO object is essentially just a wrapper for the database access object. Um, so whether or the, the, the connection string. Um, so normally in your code you would have connect, MySQL connect or MySQL I connect. Um, but if you wanted to do like a, a SQL server connection or Oracle connection, you would have to completely restructure your application. PDO takes that those abstract pieces, the, the, the nuances that make up those uh, those pieces of code that, that make that database connection work and it abstracts it into this nice object that regardless of what type of database you're using those co uh, those calls are all going to be the same um, so it makes it really useful when you want to make your application cross database or I, I guess that's what you would call it cross database uh, agnostic um, so with this we're going to use this code as our base code uh, just so that way it'll save us some time. So I'm going to copy that, and in good sight, I'm going to paste the code in. Um, I am going to get rid of all of this. Uh, yeah, I'll just get rid of everything. So it'll check if the form is submitted. If it is, then it'll do our processing. Uh, the first thing you need to do is create your PDO object. So I'm going to create a variable called PDO equals new PDO object. And those of you who are going through trying to learn this, um, you're going to have to understand some basic object-oriented concepts. Uh, PDO, the, the new PDO is an object. Um, it's got methods which are essentially functions embedded within that, that code um, that's only accessible through that code. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create our connection string. Uh, we need to specify what type of database we want. So MySQL and then colon host equals localhost or whatever your host name is semicolon d, uh, db name and then you pass in your db name and ours is php security and then you pass in your username which is root for me at least and password is null um, so this is your connection piece. The only thing that will really change if you were to go from let's say MySQL to Oracle or uh, SQL Server is this connection string. Everything else can stay the same. Now that we have our connection string all set up, we need to create a SQL statement. 
normally with this you would do select ID from users where username is equal and then you would pass in the post data that you're looking for with PDO what you want to do is you want to create placeholders just like with a MySQL I um, prepared statements instead of using the question mark which you could use but PDO makes it a little bit easier you can actually give it um, variable names or, or an actual name that you want to use so this one I'm going to call it username and password is equal to password and these placeholders are identified by this colon up front of the variable and uh, these names could be anything this one could be Jason and this one could be uh, banana if I wanted to um, but once we have that SQL set up we want to do our create our prepared statement so we're going to create a variable called stmt for statement is equal to PDO prepare and then we're passing in our SQL the next difference between um, the MySQL I prepared statement and the PDO prepared statement there isn't a whole lot of difference you can use um, bind param and then there's also another one with PDO called bind variable or bind value sorry um, I prefer bind param because it is a little more flexible I'll explain that in a second uh, but what we want to do is we want to bind our values stmt Oops, bind param and then here we need to specify what our uh, placeholder name was so username and then we're going to pass in our post data so post username is going to be placed into wherever that place the username placeholder is in the SQL statement do the same thing for oops, TNT bind param password and we're gonna pass in our password uh, the nice thing about PDO is it will try and figure out what the value of the data going in is and then it'll try and make sure that it only accepts that that data um, so it'll uh, it, it'll be a little more secure than a regular MySQL I prepared statement. Um, the other thing that you can do is using stmt bind value, and that works the same way. Only bind value is not as flexible. Once you set it, you have to manually you have to recreate the whole prepared statement in order to uh, change that value. With bind param, you can uh, change those on the fly and re-execute that prepared statement and those values will update um, so I would say use bind param it gives you more flexibility down the road in case you need it uh, but, but bind value is also an option if you need it alright and then the last thing we need to do is actually execute our prepared statement so once execute runs we have all the data it queries the, the database gets the results set back and it places it in our STMT uh, object and then uh, once that's all done we need to check if there were if something actually happened if, if the data was actually uh, collected from the database so we're going to create a variable called result is equal to STMT fetch and this is just getting the data out of or the the first row out of the result set and with this I'm gonna um, there are different types you can do PDO um, and then there's different uh, fetch types with PDO there's fetch ASOC fetch both fetch bound uh, fetch class if you want to uh, assign it to a particular class class type um, what I'm going to use is fetch object and it creates a standard object that you can use and I, I just think it's a little bit easier so we're going to echo oops, user dot results ID is logged in and then if that doesn't work we're going to echo oops else we're going to echo 
credentials were wrong. And we are going to display the form. All right. So now that we have that updated, we're going to go into change the directory to good site. And if we try and do the same exploit, I type in test and grab. Oops, I'll switch back over because I got to grab that code here and do that hack where one equals one again. And if we try that, we should get, oops, put an error in my execute statement. Let's go back in and take a look. Um, ah, my parameter was uh, misspelled. Uh, let's give that another try. So the credentials were wrong. Now if I were to do a regular login without the hack, the user login works correctly. Um, as I was saying, saying before, if we were to need to create something where we were getting a collection of a particular category out of a database, um, and then we want to do the same query, but we just want to change the category. Uh, right now, I don't have anything set up to do that. Um, but what we could do is we could do if or actually it would still work if we were to do this. Um, so after this if statement, we wanted to get all the users from uh, from the database. What I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to do SQL equals select uh, username from users where ID is equal to user ID. And we're going to stmt is equal to pdo prepare, pass in the SQL. I'm going to do bind param, and I'll explain what it, what this is as I'm going through. Um, I'm creating a new SQL, so I'm going to do something after the login form was displayed, or the results uh, were displayed. I'm going to break here so that way uh, doesn't look all jumbled. Um, create a new SQL. I'm going to create a prepared statement from that SQL, and I'm going to bind username. Oops, user ID to a value of four. And then I'm going to execute. And the result, I'm going to grab the fetch data. as an object, so PDO fetch object. And then I'll just echo out a statement. Results, username. And the nice thing about prepared statements is now that I have this particular code, if I want to put this in a loop, I could, or if I just want to re-execute it afterwards, just change the user ID here. Now this should pull up the next user. I won't have to create a new prepared statement. It'll just replace the user ID uh, with bind param, execute the new prepared statement, and spit out the new user name. Uh, so if I refresh this, I just noticed I had a, a quick bug in uh, my code. Um, not even thinking I put the values right in here. Uh, with bind param, you need to pass in a variable. And the variable is going to stay the same, uh, or, or at least the, when you bind it, you have to use the same variable. So user ID would be the variable that I'm creating. 
and then up here I'm going to create this and set it to four and then on the next iteration through user ID I'm going to set it to six so as I said uh, the variable needs to be the same when you're binding but now you don't have to modify your SQL statement so if I come back out here hit refresh now the test user exists and both test users exist um, or six. Let's put in seven and see what happens. Oh, that's still showing up, both of them. Um, oh, I took out. That was my fault. I took out one line too many. Um, all right. So now this should work. Okay, so we have the test user exists and user Fred exists. Um, so I would play around with that. As you go through, uh, this can actually speed up your queries quite a bit, uh, just using this if you're just modifying some of the information inside of the query. Uh, let's say you're displaying a list of friends for a particular user. You could, for all the friends, you can just go through and uh, grab some of the specific information I was more or less coming up with uh, with this on the fly. I didn't have a really good example of how to use uh, this kind of kind of kind of stuff, um, but I would definitely use uh, prepared statements for just your regular queries and stuff like that, just because of the security that it adds to your application. And if you ever need to go to a different database type, it's so easy just to switch it out. You can just change your connection string here, uh, follow whatever the connection string is for your particular database you're going to, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, bind param, all this stuff will, should work um, because PDO is just a wrapper for your particular database type and then uh, your application will be up and running pretty quickly. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, hopefully it was informative. Uh, let me know if I happen to miss anything. I think I got most of it. Um, but uh, thanks for watching.